Hello and welcome to the episode 196 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we will focus on a tragic death, a verbal fight, and the continuing work on Abbey Road. Let's start the episode with the event in John Lennon's life, the one that probably shaped his personality the most. On the 15th of July 1958, his mother Julia died. John had lived with his Aunt Mimi and her husband George Smith in her house since 1946, but his mother Julia was a constant positive presence in his life. As we have seen in episode 60 of What A Fab Day, it was probably Julia that bought the first guitar to 16-year-old John in 1957. It was her who shared John's love for rock and roll and, despite Mimi's opinion on the matter, encouraged him to learn how to play and to form his band, The Quarrymen. It was after one of these visits at her sister Mimi's house that Julia was hit by a car driven by Eric Clogg while crossing to get to her bus stop. John was traumatized by his mother's death. He started to drink heavily and to get into fights, developing emotional demons that he would fight for the rest of his life. The death of Julia also served to draw him closer to Paul McCartney, whose mother had also died of cancer when Paul was really young. Perhaps it's a bit too much to maintain, as writer Ian MacDonald has, that Julia was transfigured into John's muse. On the other hand, he named his first son after her and composed three songs about her – Julia, Mother and My Mum is Dead. Let's go on with the episode Leaving These Dark Clouds Behind. In 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at the Holyoke Hall in Liverpool. Fun fact, this venue was only about 200 yards from Penny Lane. This is the closest the band ever performed to the street they will later sing about. One year later, in 1962, the same lineup of the band was on the stage of the Carven Club in Liverpool for an evening performance. Let's jump forward four years, just four years, but it seems a lifetime for the Beatles. On the 15th of July 1968, between 3.30 and 8.00 pm, the band further improved on Revolution and Obladi Oblada. The former was subject to two new mono mixes, while Paul wanted to re-record his vocals on the latter. This led to a rather terse exchange with longtime Beatles producer George Martin. Martin offered some suggestions to McCartney, to which he replied, You come down and sing it. Martin, generally calm and amiable, shouted back, Then bloody sing it again, I give up, I just don't know any better how to help you. This verbal fight reflected a state of deep disharmony in which the once indestructible unit working on the Beatles' music had come to, during these first White Album recording sessions. Anyhow, after the new vocal track was recorded, the band added other background contributions, like fake laughter and the singing of some words meant to increase the joyful atmosphere of the song. Obladi Oblada was then mixed down again and, from 9.00 pm, the Beatles started rehearsing Cry Baby Cry. They stopped and wrapped up the session at 3 am, without any suitable rhythm track take. On the same day, Apple Corps moved in the new headquarters in Tree Savile Row, the first time the Beatles' new business venture had an entire building for its activities. Each Beatle had his own office. There was a recording studio that was eventually opened in the basement and, on the rooftop of the building, the Beatles performed their last public gig, as we have seen in episode 30 of this podcast. 
Before closing the episode, let me ask you once again to share this episode on your socials with your friends if you feel that it grabbed your interest. For any other way of helping me out to build a community of music lovers and produce more music-related content for you, or, why not, to allow me to buy an entire building in London, you can head, as usual, to www.simonmas.com support and check out what you can do. Thank you for being fab. In 1969, the Fabs had the first two-location recording session of the Abbey Road LP. Two-location because the band operated between 2.30 and 6.00 pm in EMI Studio 3 and between 6.00 and 11.00 pm in Studio 2. For those who don't know how a studio session works, this means that the studio personnel didn't just have to move the tape reels to another part of the building. Quite a nuisance in the days of 8-track tape machines, with each song needing 8 tape reels if the recording contained the song alone, without rehearsals or false starts. It also means setting up the new studio. This might be as simple as plugging in a microphone setting it up on a stand and put some acoustic panels here and there to get the best results, but it might also mean moving amplifiers and the drum set and miking each element separately. It's routine work, but it's still an inconvenience to break a session between two different studios. Anyhow, the Beatles focused on You Never Give Me Your Money, with backing vocals, tambourine and tubular bells added to the rhythm track, followed by six rough stereo mixes of the song. None of the mixes was final, though, and they were all scrapped at a later date. And this concludes our episode. Tomorrow, among other things, we will talk about a massive BBC recording session. Thank you again for your support and see you tomorrow. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas music you love